for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another cheats video for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over my defensive cheats, my top 10 cheats, tips, and tricks that give you an unfair advantage when playing Madden 22. So, as always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go let's get right into the video. Now, starting off with run defense, recently the run commit glitch was patched in the January patch, so I know a lot of people are really having trouble stopping the run. <laughs> the number one run defense to use in this game, no matter what formation you're in, no matter what defense you like to pick, nope. is going to be cover four. Cover four is a natural run defense, whether you use cover four with matching principles, like cover four quarters or cover four palms, or whether you use cover four regular, which is like a drop contain where all the safeties drop back. If you pick cover four, and as long as you don't guess pass, the safeties will initially play the run kind of like linebackers all your defensive linemen all your linebackers typically will play the run first but cover four is the only defense where the safeties will play the run first as well if you watch cover twos and cover threes typically the safeties drop back immediately whether you guess or pass or do nothing at all but when it comes to cover four as long as you don't guess pass the safeties will walk forward and play the run similar to a linebacker but the key thing for them to react that way is do not guess pass if you guess pass they will immediately drop back just like any other defense now like i said i know that the run commit glitch was patched but you can still guess run a lot as long as you pay attention to what your opponent is doing pre-snap a lot of people don't know that you can actually see your opponent's name at any given time on any given play of the player that they are currently controlling in pass plays you cannot select alignment so at any point in time if you ever see a lineman's name pop up that means that your opponent made a mistake and selected a lineman when maybe trying to rotate to a receiver or something like that to basically shift. If at any point in time you see a lineman's name, it is a dead giveaway that this is a run play and you can immediately run commit to stop the run. To run commit, just hit the RB or R1 button and down on the right stick. Next up, we're gonna go over tackling. Now, before we even get to tackling, a lot of times you're gonna find yourself in a position where you have to get around a blocker. One of the easiest ways to go through or get around a blocker is simply by using the hit stick on that blocker. A lot of times, if you hit stick blockers, it will let you get through the blocking a lot faster than if you get caught up and tangled in an animation. So at any point in time, if you're chasing a run play down, one of the best ways to get through a block that gets in your way is putting down the hit stick, and you'll basically blow right through that and get to the running back. If you're like me or like a lot of Madden players, you probably try to hit stick on every single down. This is good. You can sometimes force fumbles. You can sometimes uh, make a big play by doing that. But ultimately, the best way to tackle in this game and probably the cheapest way to tackle in this game is with dive tackling. Dive tackling, if done correctly, is something that you can basically take up space in a flash and tackle people that are five or more yards away from you, which is something that typically you can't do. Dive tackling seems to have a really small margin for error as a lot of times uh, it seems like the hit mark of a dive tackle is kind of limited a lot of times you'll you'll see animations where you almost run through the dive tackle like they're not even there but if you master dive tackling you'll notice that you'll get a lot of tackles that you would get otherwise one of the safest ways and one of the most effective ways to get tackles against hard to tackle players is safe tackling all you really have to do is get close enough to a running uh, offensive player whether it's receiver quarterback running back whatever and basically start tapping the a button to get a safe tackle animation if you do it from too far away it'll actually slow the defender up but a lot of times it'll also square you up making your chances of securing the tackle at a much higher percentage next up when it comes to run defense shooting gaps now this is something that is probably one one of the most important things when it comes to stopping the run uh, against online players shooting gaps can only be done in certain formations uh, and it's more than i'd like to go over in this particular video but i will leave links in the description if you guys want to see some defenses that i put out which you can ultimately shoot gaps but the most important thing when it comes to shooting gaps is you really have to stand back at a distance from the line of scrimmage and have a pre-designated gap that you created through a defensive play where that should allow you to shoot right through and get a tackle on a running back pretty much right after the the ball is handed to him. Next up, we'll go over pass defense. Now, one of the most important things is probably how to pass commit, which will ultimately give you a better pass rush and will have your zone coverages or man coverages react to pass plays quicker. Uh, so all you have to do to do that is basically hit the R1 or the RB button and hit up on the right stick, and you'll see that you'll have a much improved pass defense in every capacity. 
Next up, when it comes to pass defense, one of the most important things is going to be getting pressure. And one of the best ways to do that, no matter what blitz you like to run, is going to be gap stacking. Gap stacking is essentially bringing your user down over a center, typically, or a guard, uh, putting them on a blitz, and then it's just attempting to pull one of them back uh, before you drop into pass coverage after the ball is snapped. To put that player on a blitz, you just want to hit A or X, for whether you're an Xbox or PlayStation, and down the right stick. A lot of times doing this is enough to get a defensive player somewhere else on the blitzing formation in free, and they'll get an instant sack based off the fact that the lineman thought that you were going to blitz instead. Next up, when in coverage, one of the better ways to handle crossing routes is to simply slow them down by running into them as a defensive player. Sometimes you might get a pass interference penalty, but for the most part, I noticed that it really doesn't get called. So running into the receiver, especially if it's something like a drag, which is typically less than five yards, will get you no call. Nope. And a lot of times you can even do it well enough that you'll basically push a receiver into another receiver and make it easier to cover both. Nope. But at any point in time, as long as you run to a receiver properly, you will slow down their acceleration and make it easier for a sometimes slower defender to keep up with them. Next up, we're going to go over what to do when the ball's in the air. Now, if you want to get more interceptions, in the past, in previous Maddens, all you had to do was hold the wire triangle button, and you would get interceptions at a much higher rate. They basically patched that to the point where you have to kind of time it better, and it's still probably best to time it, but if you're not good at timing catch animations, a lot of times you can really have success simply by tapping the catch button. So if the ball's in the air and you're in the area controlling the user defender, just start tapping wire triangle, and you'll see you'll come down with a lot more interceptions reception animations based on the fact that you don't have to time it. Because you're hitting the catch animation so rapidly, there's no penalty and you'll come down with a lot more interceptions. Another option is swatting the pass, which a lot of people find is best to get breakup animations, which I'm not necessarily a fan of. I think nope. that you should always go for the ball. If you play the ball tight enough, if you play the ball to the point well enough, a lot of times uh, you will get knockout animations based on the fact that nobody's nope. going to get the catch because you're playing the ball properly. But if you would rather trigger a swat animation, all you have to do is hit the L1 or the LB button, whether you're an Xbox or PlayStation, and you will essentially go up and knock the ball out of the receiver's hands as long as you're in the right area. This is one of the better ways to do it. Uh, it's really up to you guys if you think that's best, but sometimes based off where you are positioned, it might be the only option that you have. Next up, we'll go over strafing. Strafing is probably the most important thing when it comes to getting interceptions. You'll get much more interceptions if you high point the ball from a strafe animation than if you basically try to catch it at a different angle, which defensive backs don't typically do well. Typically, when the receiver is sprinting down the field, if you have time to come back to the ball, all you have to do is hold the left trigger or the L2 button. That will cause your defender to stand straight forward, and that will give you an opportunity for a very easy high point interception animation, where all you have to do is hit the Y or triangle button, and they will basically go up into the air a lot of times through the receiver and come down with a lot of very easy interceptions. This is, to me, the best way to get an interception if the ball is thrown in the air. Strafe interceptions are probably the highest percentage of interceptions that you will get when it comes to pick animations as you can get them like i said even through receivers a lot of times coming back to the ball so that's it that's the video if you guys want to see more videos like this as always hit the like button let me know in the comment section other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below Thank you.